Hi everybody, this is Jamie with C4 Depot, and I just received an email from somebody who really wanted a walkthrough for Infinite Ocean. So if you've purchased Infinite Ocean, uh, you, the first thing you're going to get is a zip file. So unpack the zip file, and if you look at your Infinite Ocean folder, there's a how to use folder in here with some videos that you can look at, get you started with Infinite Ocean. Uh, but the first thing you're going to want to do is take this lib4d file and put it in your version of Cinema 4D, the library folder, the browser folder, and then put that lib4d file right here into the browser folder. And once you've done that, close this out and restart in Cinema 4D. And you can go to the content browser and Infinite Ocean should be right here. And let's just double click on Infinite Ocean. And when Infinite Ocean loads, it's not using the infinite camera. Uh, what you need to do is locate that infinite camera and highlight this little square so that it's white. And now you've got Infinite Ocean as far as the eye can see. So the other question was, how do you light the scene? Well, the easiest thing is just to add a physical sky. And that's all you need to really do is just to you know get started with this but if you don't have a physical sky in your version of Cinema 4D what you can do is you can uh, in just a couple days you can download some uh, HDRI skies from C4 Depot on our website we're gonna have a whole litany of those things and some value packs so um, if they're not up when you're watching this video they will be in a in, in just a few days so what do you do when you get an HDRI sky? Well, you just create a new material and uh, turn off your reflectance, turn on your luminance channel, and load the image, which right here is the midday uh, layered HDRI file. And once that loads, let's copy that channel and let's put it into the color channel. Let's copy the channel. Paste it into the color channel. And then let's get a turn this physical sky off or just let's just get rid of it. And let's get a sky object. And let's put that HDRI sky onto the sky object. And let's add a compositing tag. And in the compositing tag, let's say um, not everything's going to be checked on except seen by camera. Then let's create another material for the JPEG file and let's load the JPEG preview. It's the 8-bit version of that sky. And let's copy that and let's make sure that it's in the luminance channel. And let's turn reflectance off. Oops. Let's paste the channel in there. And let's just do multiply for this. Okay. So then let's add another sky object and put the 8 bit JPEG on this sky. And let's add another compositing tag. Compositing. And then in this one, we're going to turn everything off except seen by camera. This is only just for, you know. Just, it's not for lighting, it's just for, for looks. All right, now let's go to our render settings and let's change this to the physical renderer. And let's go to the options tab and deselect the default light. And let's um, add global illumination. And let's turn the irradiance cache to the Quasi Monte Carlo. And I'm really kind of an impatient guy. I'm going to turn off hemispherical shading. Um, turn it back on if you want to get a really good quality rendering. So let's just do a little quick preview render and see what happens. Wow. Look at that. Image-based lighting. We don't have anything going on in the scene except for an HDRI file. And it's perfectly illuminating our scene. Now, let's just check the horizon line here for a second. Yeah, I'm getting a little bit of the other half of the HDRI, which I don't want. So 
Let's just select this tag and increase the length by 1%. And that horizon disappears. Okay. So another question was asked, well, how do you how do I change the color of the ocean? Well, let's see what kind of functions we've got in here. Now these are all functions pertaining to, you know, the swell size and the sea foam and you know, like how big you want to displace this stuff. Um, but there's also some color options down here. And you can change the ocean color to, you know, like a more of a green color if, you, if you'd like. Um, kind of up to you. But now you have to understand that the primary uh, influencer of the ocean color is going to be your sky and the angle that you're viewing the ocean at. Um, so you, if you really want to get a nice tropical looking sky, it's probably not going to happen with a cloudy, cold looking sky. So you might want to use something that's more like a clear sky for something like that. But at any rate, you can also take these, uh, surface functions and you can say like, instead of having no scattering, you can go to a one surface and, you know, you can change your color to something else if you want. And, um, Let's take a quick gander and see what we get. What we're getting. What you're going to get is you're going to get most of the reflective areas will still be reflecting the sky, but some of these shadow areas are now going to be picking up the color that you've just added in the uh, interface over here. So that's pretty much how you change the uh, color of the of the ocean. Now let's just say that you want to use a boat. What are you going to do? Okay, well let's go to the float the boat controllers, and that's where everything's hidden. So in this one, Boat Controller 1, we have a Trumpy out. Let's just turn these traffic lights to their default uh, non-colored state. And select Boat Controller 1. Let's enable Boat and Wake. And let's scale the front wake up a little bit. Let's just do a quick render and see what we're getting. You know, this is sort of an interesting thing because I've seen this happen before where uh, the boat and wake simply just doesn't, well, the front part of the, the, the bow wake is going to show up, but the rear wake is mysteriously absent, and I've, I have, I've seen this before. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to open up a, um, a, a, new, a new scene, and for some reason... Uh, this is just sort of a strange mystery. I don't know why this happens, but if you open up a new scene and you go to the content browser and you add a new infinite ocean scene and you go to the boat controllers, let's turn the Trumpy out on here and add the boat and wake. Chances are it's going to render in this one. It's a very, very odd sort of thing. There it is. I can't explain why that is, but if this ever does happen, just open up a new scene, and for whatever reason, I think it's the textures loading from the database or something. Um, that's sort of a, until we like figure out exactly why that's happening, that's just a little workaround to make sure that the uh, textures load. So usually the second time that you load it, it will show up. Sorry about that. We'll get to the bottom of that, but at least you know that there is a workaround for that. And that's really all you need to do. Now you can just grab this boat controller axis point, and you can move your boat like pretty much wherever you want, you know. It's like move it over here, and everything will follow with it. Now the other thing that uh, you might want to do, go put a vibrate tag on this thing is vibrate boink and select your vibrate tag well actually put the vibrate tag on the boat object and let's turn on not position not scale but we want to do the rotation and do something kind of like you know, let's say one Now this boat um, axis is like right kind of close to the front, so let's just move that more towards the middle. Now there's a more sophisticated rig we're going to show you on how to do this, but we're not going to go over it in this 
um, particular video, but that will actually give you kind of a rocking and pitching motion for the boat very easily. And you're going to want to change the frequency depending on what your waves are doing. But that's the easiest way to get that kind of realistic uh, pitching and rocking motion for your boat uh, without any real complications with um, constraining tags. And that's pretty much it for our Infinite Ocean getting up and going. And we'll see you at the depot. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you soon. Bye now.